G'day guys, we've got a calculus question here today. We're asked to determine the gradient of this expression at the point 1 comma negative 3. Now what we're going to use in this question, or to find an answer to this question, is we're going to use uh, implicit differentiation. Now in this video I'm going to try and describe how you know I see implicit differentiation, what I think about when I try and use implicit differentiation, and then I'm going to apply sort of those uh, general ideas to this problem so we can get an answer for it. Okay, so let's start off with how hopefully you guys are, so if you're only just starting with implicit differentiation, you'll hopefully be aware of just your plain vanilla differentiation. So if we're given a, an equation off the top of my head, let's just say we're given a quadratic y equals 3x squared plus 4x minus, I don't know, 9. Okay, and we're asked to take the derivative of this. Now, what you guys would normally do is you'd just go y dash or something like this. You'd have, say y dash. Some of you might be used to seeing it like this, fx with a dash. Some of you guys will be used to seeing it like this. Now, obviously, all of these things mean exactly the same thing. So what we're going to be using today is we make use of this notation here. Now, if I'm solving this problem to find the derivative, what I do is I take the derivative with respect to x of both sides. Now, what that means is I do this. I go dy d, d, dx of y is equal to d dx of this function. Great. Now, d dx of y is just or the derivative. And this is our plain vanilla differentiation. So you can see here how I can utilize this ddx differentiation or technique on a plain vanilla quadratic function. But why I've done this to start with is to show that there is no real difference to, than doing that when we come to implicit differentiation. So let's start on this question straight away. And so you can um, see that there literally is no change. So what we're going to do is I'm going to differentiate both sides with respect to x. Cool. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to separate each of my terms and I'm going to go d dx of 5 plus d dx of x cubed equals d dx of xy plus d dx of y squared. Cool. So, to start with, on the left-hand side, it's going to be fairly self-explanatory because you can just use your plain vanilla differentiation techniques. Now, the derivative of a constant with respect to x is going to be equal to 0. The derivative of x cubed with respect to x is just 3x squared. Now, this is where it becomes a little bit more tricky. So, let's start with doing this one here, d dx of xy. Now, With this one, we've got two functions basically multiplying by each other. So what we're going to use is we're going to use the product rule here. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave the, uh, well, the way I do product rule is I leave the back one constant. And I times it by the derivative of the front one. Then we add it to, we leave the front one constant. 
and then we times it by the derivative of the back one. Cool, so we can simplify this. The, this is going to be equal to the derivative of x with respect to x is just 1. So this piece here is just 1. And so we have y times 1 is simply y. And here we've got x and then we've got dy dx. We've got derivative of y with respect to x, which is just this. Exactly the same as how we calculated this part. So plus x dy dx. So we're going to substitute that piece in. Okay, now this piece here, this is probably one of the more trickier pieces and we have to use the chain rule to solve it. So we've got d dx of y squared. Now what we're going to use here guys is we're going to use a relationship that sort of mimics the chain rule. When I say mimics, it's exactly the same as the chain rule. And the way it works is if I have a function in terms of y, let me just try and find myself some space. If I have a function in terms of y and I want to get the derivative of it, so d dx of This is going to be equal to the derivative of the function with respect to y times the derivative of y with respect to x. So that there, guys, is your chain rule straight up. And how this applies to this formula is we're going to take the derivative of y with respect to y. So that's going to be equal to 2y. So this piece here, in this case, was equal to 2y. And I'm going to then times it by the derivative of y with respect to x, which we don't know. So we just literally times it by... Cool. So we can stick that in. So we have 2y dy dx. And now, guys, what we're going to do is we're going to simplify this. So I'm going to take this y over to the other side. And I'm going to have 3x squared minus y is equal to x dy dx plus 2y dy dx. Now it's pretty easy to see that we have a common factor here. So we can take that out the front. And then we can divide both sides by x plus 2y. And if we do that, let me just change colour, we're going to have dy dx is equal to 3x squared take y over x plus 2y. Cool. So finally, guys, we have to evaluate this derivative at 1, negative 3. So finally, we're going to say dy dx evaluated at 1, negative 3. So this is just a case of subbing in the numbers, guys. So we're going to have 1 is for x, so we have 3 times 1 squared, take, and y is negative 3, so we take 
negative 3, all divided by x is 1, plus 2 times negative 3. <coughs> Sorry about that. So, the top, we have 1 squared is 1, times 3 is 3, minus minus 3 is plus 3, so 3 plus 3 is 6, and then we have 1 plus negative 6 is negative 5, so we can keep as that, so negative 6 over 5, which is equal to negative 1.2. And that, guys, is the gradient of our function. So we, if you're in an exam, what I would do is, at the bottom of my page, after you've done all your working out, I would write m equals negative 1.2. So there can be no doubt about what your answer actually is. Now, what we had to do to solve this function is understand that taking or taking the derivative of something implicitly, which is taking the derivative of both sides and differentiating each value of the functions or relationships individually, is basically exactly the same as def as differentiating something explicitly, which is just like taking the full derivative of one side. What we what we did is we took the derivative with respect to 5 and x cubed with respect to x, and then we took the derivative with respect to x of xy and y squared. Now, the, the hardest thing I found when I first started doing implicit differentiation, guys, was understanding this part here the chain rule that's associated when you have a y value involved. And knowing when to use chain rules and when to use product rules when we have x's times y's, etc, etc, etc. But I hope this sort of uh, video has, you know, crystallized any kind of knowledge that you have in your head about implicit differentiation. I hope it's actually, you know, taught you something as well. That would be amazing. Um, if it did, give me a thumbs up. I know it's a bit haphazard, guys. Um, I'm in a bit of a rush today, so I thought I would just chuck this video out just because a couple of the kids have been demanding it. And, yeah, until next time, keep studying. Give me a like, subscribe to my channel, and definitely just keep enjoying your maths.